Pikmin, adorable mascots, obedient helpers, and ruthless killers. While preparing for a routine colonoscopy, I was stuck on a toilet for seven hours straight playing Pikmin 4, and I was haunted by two thoughts. The first was, I was gonna have a long hose stuck several feet up my butt in a handful of hours. And the second was, how many of these little guys would it take to murder me? Long after my procedure passed and my butt stopped hurting, the second question remained. So I wondered, hypothetically, could I devise an equation that would allow anyone to determine how many Pikmin it would take to kill them? The answer is yes, and this took weeks of math, so please like and subscribe. Okay, that's out of the way, let's get going. What began as an innocent question turned out to be the greatest mathematical obstacle I have encountered in my life. I dove down a rabbit hole of Reddit posts, forums, and multiple wikis and quickly came to the conclusion that there is no unified consensus on the physical attributes of Pikmin. Through internet sleuthing across several weeks, I have, for the first time, ever answered the question, how many Pikmin would it take to kill you? And I have made a calculator where you can find the exact number based on your own height and weight. But first, let's start by defining the ways in which a Pikmin could kill you. Now, the more you think about this, the more ways you realize Pikmin could easily kill you. These little guys could simply climb inside your ear and destroy your brain, or get into your mouth and burst out of your chest from the inside. But in any case where a Pikmin enters your body, you could be killed by a single one, so there's no real mystery there. In the games, you can throw Pikmin, have them pick things up, and have them bash their skulls into enemies until they die. So I decided to figure out the math behind each of these three scenarios. We're going to use math to figure out three things. One, how many Pikmin would it take to lift you up and throw you off a cliff? 2. How many Pikmin would it take to bash you to death? 3. How many Pikmin would it take to kill you if they were made into a giant Pikmin ball and hurled at you? And 4. What does the love of a human woman feel like? Please God, I'm so lonely, I just- all right, so if we want to figure out how much a Pikmin can lift, all we have to do is look up how much they can carry. A quick Google search shows us they can carry one weight unit. Okay, great, that tells me nothing. Luckily, I found a YouTube video that shows a Pikmin can pick up about one gram of weight each. But wait a minute, in the Pikmin games, there are many instances where they can lift more than that. Here's a watermelon that weighs 10,000 grams being carried by 100 Pikmin, which means each Pikmin is carrying a whopping 100 grams or 100 times their body weight. But wait, if a Pikmin can carry 100 grams, why does it take 12 Pikmin to carry a Game Boy Advance SP which weighs 143 grams? Then you got 10 Pikmin carrying an apple which weighs 85 grams, but then you look at the Wikipedia and you see a whole bunch of objects and different weights and different amounts of Pikmin that can carry them, and it turns out it varies significantly depending on a number of factors including the type of Pikmin and the game in which- Okay. Then you realize there isn't exactly an established order to what Pikmin can and cannot carry. So instead, let's look at this more holistically. Shigeru Miyamoto has stated that during development, they compared Pikmin to ants because ants go out, lift up things, and take them home. An ant can pick up 20 times its own weight. So for the sake of our collective sanity, let's say a one gram Pikmin can pick up 20 grams of weight and just move on. So in order to figure out how many Pikmin could pick you up, you just have to figure out how much you weigh in grams, divide it by 20, and boom, you got your number, right? Well, well, yeah, technically, but here's a question. How would those Pikmin carry you? Would they lift you up by the soles of your feet? Would you have to lay down and have them under your back? Wait a minute, what if the surface area of your skin doesn't allow for all the Pikmin necessary to pick you up? How would you figure that out? So you open your calculator again and get to work. The first thing we have to do is figure out how many Pikmin it would take to carry you. All you have to do there is figure out your weight in grams and divide by 20. So for me, coming in at about 100 70 pounds of pure muscle, when we convert that to grams, we divide by 20 and find out it would take about 3,855 Pikmin to carry me. But can that many Pikmin grab onto my beautiful body? Now what we need to do is determine the total surface area of the skin. So hypothetically, if someone laid out all your skin, how much surface area would that be? And what parts of your skin constitute a singular surface all the Pikmin could grab onto? Luckily, you can go to this calculator to see the total surface area of 
your skin. For me, and for most people, it's around 3,000 square inches. Great, so now we have to figure out the size of the Pikmin. On the official Nintendo website, it says one inch, but other sources say 1.14 inches. So I spent two weeknights ignoring my wife and child to compare in-game screenshots of Pikmin to items, and I determined that they're probably closer to 1.14 inches. Now, in order for a Pikmin to hold you up, they aren't going to occupy 1.14 inches worth of space. Instead, most of them will be standing under you with their hands in the air holding you up. If we look at the official image of a red Pikmin, he stands at 308 pixels high and that is equivalent to 1.14 inches. That means that if he is 84 pixels wide, he is 0.31 inches wide. And that... <laughs> But wait, Pikmin are squishy little guys and can bunch up together, so you don't technically need 0.31 inches of width. And different Pikmins have different widths. Ah, oh, fuck! So you come up with the squish factor, which stands for stupid, quick, unnecessary, intense, symbolic, way of measuring how Pikmin huddle together. After doing more calculations than it took to put man on the moon, you come up with the idea that the total volume a Pikmin could squeeze into is roughly a 0.22 square inch cube, which is about 70% of our initial calculations. This squish factor could be debated, but these little guys are pretty pliable, so I think it's fair to assume they could bunch up pretty close together. And we don't have to get an exact number here. We just have to make sure the number of Pikmin that could hold you across the surface area of your skin is more than the number of the total Pikmin it takes to actually lift you up. By identifying the squish factor, the final piece of the puzzle is complete, and we can finally determine how many it would take to lift you with the following equation. So, a Pikmin weighs a gram and can pick up 20 grams. By finding out your weight in grams and dividing by 20, you can determine how many Pikmin it takes to pick you up. Then, by figuring out the total surface area of your skin, the part parts of your body the Pikmin will be holding and the space each Pikmin occupies, you will be able to find out how many Pikmin could feasibly grab onto you at once. That number has to be greater than the raw amount of Pikmin it takes to support your weight. Otherwise, there wouldn't be enough space for the Pikmin to pick you up. So what are the results? Well, if Pikmin decided to pick you up, you would be screwed. In my case, I weigh 77,110.7 grams, and dividing that by 20 gives us 3,856, so it takes that many Pikmin to physically lift my weight. Then my skin surface area is roughly 3,081.7 square inches. Multiplied by 49.5, which constitutes my backside, results in 1,525.4. When that is divided by 0.22, we get 6,934. That is is significantly greater than 3,856, so that means the Pikmin required to pick me up could quite comfortably do so. But even with my bad, high-end surface area calculations, we're looking at about a 3,000 Pikmin difference, so even if we alter this a little bit, I still think there's quite enough space for a Pikmin to pick me up. But here's the thing. There's another type of Pikmin we need to consider. A fat, bulbous, purple piece of shit that can lift an astounding 10 times times the amount of a normal Pikmin. That means that it would only take 386 purple Pikmin to pick me up. If we look at the total surface area those purple Pikmin take up, which is different because of their height and weight, fuck math, you can actually see that they only take up about 131 square inches, or 1 11th of my entire backside. These things could just pick me up by my fat ass! Has no one ever realized the power of these monsters? Olimar, what a horrible power do you command? But what if I told you there was something stronger in the Pikmin universe? A monstrous beast with 100 times the power of ordinary Pikmin, who could pick you up by the big toe and launch you like it was nothing. I'm talking, of course, about Ochi. Ochi is the man. You can ride on him, he can fight for you, and when you fully upgrade him, he can carry 100 weight units. He can carry this whole watermelon by himself! Do you see this shit? So if we take our calculations, we can determine that it would only take 39 Ochis to pick me up and hurl me off a cliff. So basically, Pikmin are ultra strong, horrifying monsters that could feasibly destroy the entire human race if they desired. However, this is but one method these devilish nightmares could use to murder you. 
When Pikmin get into trouble, they use their heads. And by that, I mean they bash their heads harder than a teen at a thrash metal concert. Once they fell their enemies, they take the corpses back to make more Pikmin in a disgusting, Frankenstein-esque process that chills me to my core. How is this a children's game? Okay, so how many Pikmin would it take to bash you to death? And how many Pikmin could feasibly get onto your body at once? Well, after the nightmare of equations to determine how many it would take to lift you, I have good news and bad news. The good news is we have just about everything we need in order to complete these calculations for this scenario. The bad news is I haven't slept in about three days and I feel like there's a giant Pikmin right behind me, but every time I turn to look at him, he goes away. But I still feel his eyes burying into the back of my head and I don't know what to do! Ah! The only new thing to understand is how much force can a Pikmin exert when it smacks you with his head? And how many Pikmin could cover the total surface area of your body? Let's start with that first question. ChatGPT says that the estimated force of a headbutt for someone who weighs 77 kilograms is anywhere from 1,509 newtons to 3,018 newtons. We'll go ahead and take the median of these numbers to get a decent average. Average. Hey, so I'm editing this right now and re-googling this data and it's telling me a headbutt can be anywhere from 770 newtons to over 7,000 newtons. I'm not a physicist or anything, so let's just continue with our 2300 number and proceed. So for someone that weighs 77 kilograms, a headbutt can deliver 2,263.5 newtons of force. So doing some basic math, we can find that a creature that weighs one gram would only exert a force of roughly 0.3 newtons. Because I'm no longer taking Algebra 2 in high school, I just had ChatGPT do all this stuff. Thank you technology, you invalidated all my mathematical learning. But how much is 0.3 newtons of force? I found this video of this guy explaining newton force, and basically if you hold a Snickers bar, your palm is feeling about half a newton of force being pushed down onto it, which is similar to what a Pikmin would exert on you if it was attacking you. Now let's imagine our entire body is covered in Pikmin. If the average Pikmin is 1.14 inches tall and 0.31 inches wide, what we have to do is multiply the height and width, or use chat GPT, then divide the total surface area of your skin by that number, or use chat GPT, to get the total number of Pikmin that can be on your body. In my case, it's 14,008. Now this number may be slightly different from the other number in the previous scenario, because we are assuming Pikmin are holding onto your body vertically, while in the other scenario, they are holding you up. Yes, I've thought of this, no I don't know how to please a woman, please stop asking me. So hypothetically, that means if they were all headbutting me at once, I would have a total of 4,202 newtons of force being exerted on me every second. Now that's enough to really hurt if consolidated in one area, but the problem is this is spread out over my entire body. So it will basically feel like someone lightly brushing my skin at thousands of different points. This means if Pikmin wanted to beat you to death, they really couldn't. Even purple Pikmin wouldn't do that much damage. Purple Pikmin weigh 10 times the amount of normal Pikmin, so they can probably exert 3 newtons of force on you. This is like holding a couple of apples. If you look at the official Nintendo images of Purple Pikmin and measure their height and width in pixels compared to Red Pikmin like a crazy person, you can see they're a little bit bigger. So by doing the same equation from before while your wife takes your kid to her mother's house, we can find that 9,064 Purple Pikmin could cover your entire body, and that group could exert 27,191 newtons of force on you every single second. That's basically the force you feel if your car crashes into a wall at 20 miles an hour. But again, this force is dispersed significantly. A needle needs to apply anywhere from 1 to 10 newtons of force to penetrate the skin, and the point of a needle is significantly smaller than the impact area of a Pikmin's head. While the purple Pikmin may hurt you, it wouldn't be intolerable unless they were on you for an extended period of time. So when it comes to getting beaten to death, even Purple Pikmin and Ochi can't do a lot of damage to you, and in the time it would take for all of those Pikmin to get on you, you could probably brush them off. Sure, Purple Pikmin can technically generate a lot of force, but because it is spread out over so wide an area, it's not enough to kill you unless you absolutely could not get them off you for several hours. It would just feel like getting flicked all over your body a few thousand times. At best, it's a mild annoyance, and at worst, my wife isn't coming back. Lindsay, if you get this, my Pikmin video is almost done. Please come back. I miss you and I promise
The Pikmin Boulder is the easiest of all of this to figure out, simply because we already know the damage done if a heavy object strikes various parts of your body. All we have to do is figure out how many Pikmin could fit into an object that would be able to kill us. Some quick googling shows us that 1100 pounds of force dropped on your head will crack your skull, which probably means game over for you. Now if an object is traveling at terminal velocity, it really doesn't have to be that big to do a lot of damage. If we look at ChatGPT, it says for an object to deliver 1100 pounds of force, it only has to weigh 396 grams if traveling at terminal velocity. So if Olimar stood on top of a 1500 foot mountain and threw a ball of 396 Pikmin directly on your head, you would die. But remember purple Pikmin? Since they weigh 10 grams each, it turns out that just 40 of these chunky sons of bitches skydiving down to your dome could ruin you forever. Basically, if Olimar was able to launch these things out of a cannon, every obstacle faced in the games and every obstacle on his path to world domination would absolutely crumble. That being said, reaching terminal velocity requires a drop from a massive height, and while Olimar is great at throwing these little guys, he doesn't have pinpoint accuracy. So while this could technically kill you, it would be very hard for Pikmin to land directly on your skull from such a height. After figuring out all of these calculations, I decided to make an Excel document that you can access below. By putting in your weight and height, you can see precisely how many Pikmin it would take to take you down. The most frightening part of all of this is just how many Pikmin it takes to pick you up. The fact that they can't really exert that much force on you, or that they can only cause mortal damage if they're traveling at terminal velocity, shows that they aren't really that dangerous to us. However, their lifting power is absolutely insane, and it's basically their greatest strength, especially when you look at the power of purple Pikmin and Ochi. Luckily for us, there aren't that many Pikmin in the games. Olimar gets maybe a thousand at most, but wait a minute, Pikmin are based off ants, right? That would mean if they existed in our world, there would only be, let's just do a quick Google search here, 20 quadrillion Pikmin. And if there are 8 billion people on the planet, that means if ants are Pikmin, there would be 2.5 million Pikmin per person, or nearly 650 times the amount needed to carry you. Oh my god. Lindsay? Lindsay, get our daughter! I finished my calculations! If the Pikmin rise up, we're all gonna die! Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. This one took a little bit longer because of all the math, but if you liked it, a like and a subscribe would go a long way to help grow this channel and allow me to make more videos. If you have any criticisms or any alternative ways of calculating this, let me know in the comments because while I think my math is pretty good, I could have missed something here. I should have a new video out in about a month or so, so until then, I hope everyone has a good day, and I look forward to the next one. Thanks, guys. Bye.